Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. In 2009, we received a large collection of items from the Fogg Rollins Trust, one of which was this cardboard box labeled Miss L.G. Rollins, Dealer in Fine Millinery, 148 Water Street, Exeter. I don't know if that's a picture of Miss Rollins on the box. We don't have any actual photos of her. It might just be a stock image to show off the hat, because that's what a milliner did for a living. The word millinery refers to the sale and creation of ladies' hats. The word comes to us from the city of Milan, where I guess the fanciest hats were made. Hats were very gendered items. Makers of men's hats were called hat makers. Even in a small place like Exeter, <clears throat> the gentlemen bought their fine hats from a hat maker like the Merrill Hat Company. The ladies visited a millinery shop to purchase their hats and bonnets. And this is interesting. In a world where business was firmly in the hands of men, there was one huge exception, and that was the world of millinery. When I went searching for Exeter's millinery shop owners, there were only a few men, like George Brackett, who in 1850 advertised his millinery department. So he may have not been the one working on the hats. On the whole, this was a women's business. I also thought naively that I would list all the Exeter millinaires, but there were far too many. The earliest included Martha Gilman in 1835, although there were probably some before her who weren't advertising in the newspapers. Hats were worn for a variety of reasons and were considered a mandatory part of one's wardrobe. There were hats you wore to church or hats for formal events, hats for going shopping downtown, hats for festive occasions, hats when in mourning. Toward the end of the 19th century, hats became enormous and were often decorated with rare plumage. These could be quite a problem if you found yourself seated behind someone wearing one of these creations at the theater. In 1911, there were nine millinery shops in Exeter, four of which were on Water Street. Demand was high and all these establishments were owned and operated by women, primarily single women. It was one of the few occupations open to women, and it was an acceptable occupation at that. Miss Winnie Purrington, who you can read about in this 1910 publication, Exeter, the business center of Rockingham County, its business, its business men, had worked as a clerk in Jacob Pettengill's grocery store. After 20 years, he retired, so she bought the store to set up her millinery shop. The business has continued prosperously and growth shows that her ability and enterprise are appreciated, it says. Unlike a lot of other occupations like housekeeper, washerwoman, seamstress, it was possible to make a solid living in the millinery trade. And yet, you knew there had to be something. And yet, it was still considered an occupation of convenience, something that nearly all women could fall back on. As if the kind of skills the job required, salesmanship, artistic creativity, fancy sewing, were something that anyone could do. Lizzie Rollins, after running her business for years, found other employment later. She took a job as a clerk in the Registry of Deeds office. Ladies' hats were a fashion necessity until the 1960s when most women decided they were unnecessary. Today, most of us only wear hats when we're prompted by the weather. But tip of the hat to those women who pioneered participation in the business world, the milliners. For more Exeter history, which includes the ladies, our website is www.exeterhistory.org.